Close your eyes and imagine you're going on a trip anywhere in the world. Now there's a catch. This is a trip to visit a scientist in the place where they work. In your mind, envision them busy doing the work that a scientist does. What do you see? I'll give you a moment. All right, does everyone have their scientist in mind? And let me guess, did it look a little something like this guy? A crazy looking white guy in a lab coat holding a beaker? I thought so. You just took the draw scientist test, which has been used for more than 50 years to envision, for, to understand how people, and students in particular, envision scientists. What's so telling about this test? Overwhelmingly, most students who take it draw white male scientists. These perceptions matter because they reinforce cultural stereotypes that may make it less likely for girls and students of color to see themselves as scientists. What the research tells us is that career aspirations and interest in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM for short, are largely formed between the ages of 10 and 14. And that for young children, job preferences and career aspirations are strongly linked to their images of particular occupations. So if most students think that science is for crazy looking white guys, why would they become a scientist? I can give you a couple of reasons. One is that science drives our economy. A 2010 report by President Obama's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology stated that America's success in the 21st century would rely heavily on the ideas and the skills of a STEM literate, STEM educated, and STEM trained workforce. Recent estimates suggest that to meet the nation's evolving workforce needs, more than a million more STEM professionals will need, be, need to be added by the year 2022. These jobs are diverse. Most require moderate but not excessive levels of education, bachelor's degrees, and most pay well, typically ten to $90,000 more than the median family income in the U.S. Virgin Islands, which varies substantially by race. Who will be filling these jobs? Statistically, it should be women and non-white individuals. Women make up 51% of the U.S. population, and projections by the U.S. Census Bureau predict that by the year 2060, if not earlier by the year 2044, that America will become a majority minority population. Yet, women, persons with disabilities, people from low socioeconomic backgrounds, African Americans, Hispanics, Native Americans, Native Hawaiians, Native Alaskans, and Pacific Islanders are all underrepresented in STEM, meaning that in terms of the number of degrees earned and their percentage in the STEM job fields, they represent a disproportionately smaller percentage than their percentage in the U.S. population. Unfortunately, in the Earth, Atmospheric, and Ocean Sciences, collectively termed the Geosciences, these statistics get even worse for underrepresented groups. In fact, the Geosciences are one of the least diverse of all STEM fields. In 2015, the year for which we have the most recent data from the National Science Foundation, only 1.4% of doctoral degrees in the U.S. earned in the ocean sciences went to African Americans. 1.4%. Well, you might be thinking, the U.S. is big, right? 1.4% could maybe be a lot of people. It isn't. I can count them on one hand. There are four people. Why does all of this matter? The research tells us that diverse groups of people consistently outperform even the best individuals when it comes to problem solving. 
and that diversity can enhance creativity and innovation. It stands to reason then, in a STEM-driven economy, why wouldn't we have the diversity of experiences and perspectives that would allow us to solve society's most challenging problems? Things like energy, things like healthcare, things like environmental protection, and things like national security. As a woman with a PhD in the geosciences, I'm a minority. I am one of only seven women who lead a state water institute, the Virgin Islands Water Resources Research Institute, of 54 in the nation. Things are changing in the geosciences, but not as quickly as I or others would like. Because of that, I am deeply committed to working with underrepresented students in the science that I do to inspire their scientific curiosity and to instill in them the confidence that any future self they envision is possible, including one as a scientist. Two programs that I lead in the Virgin Islands work to broaden participation in the ocean sciences, and I am fortunate to work with two talented teams of people to make that work happen. The first is an ongoing program that works to reduce land-based sources of marine debris in the territory. Last fall, we invited 27 educators from St. Thomas and St. Croix and introduced new USVI-specific marine debris curricula into the schools. Here, teachers are exploring a marine debris beach box and discussing how they would use that hands-on learning activity in their classroom. The program also funded seven community transfer projects in, school, in seven schools in St. Thomas and St. Croix that linked together master's students from the University of the Virgin Islands Master's in Marine and Environmental Science program with educators and their students. One project, Keeping It Clean, in 2017, linked two master's students, two teachers, and more than 1,200 students from two public schools in St. Thomas, Lockhart Elementary School and the Bertha C. Bischolta Middle School. Students learned about marine debris, what it is, where it comes from, how it gets to the ocean, its impact on the environment, and what they could do to prevent it. These students organized and ran a three-week recycling campaign to reduce potential marine debris items in their schools and in their communities. Together, they collected over 900 aluminum cans 1,300 plastic bags, and 2,500 water bottles in just three weeks. Aluminum cans went to the Virgin Islands Waste Management Authority to be recycled, and plastics were packed and shipped and sent to a recycling center in the States. Ms. Julie's Hodge, assistant principal at Lockhart Elementary School, said about the project, a project like this is unusual in public schools. The students took ownership and exerted great energy into the recycling project. It was refreshing to see them light up about this initiative to preserve the health and the beauty of our island's ecosystem. The second program, Seize Your Tomorrow, supporting emerging aquatic scientists, works to broaden participation in the ocean sciences for Virgin Islanders from the middle school through to the PhD. It links together territorial and federal agencies, university partners, folks from the nonprofit sector, as well as the private sector. This short video explains what the program is all about. Seize Your Tomorrow is a three-part program that focuses on known dropout points for students in science. The first part of the program focuses on middle and high school students through Youth Ocean Explorers, a four-week summer program that provides hands-on field experiences in Caribbean ecosystems and exposure to career paths in the marine sciences. We're offering a lot of hands-on and engaging activities that kind of get kids interested in science and hopefully pursue careers later on in science. Like before I came here, I never really knew how to swim or anything like that. And like every time I went in the water, if I feel something, I'm running straight out. So I get more like, comfortable. I want to be like out in the field working, being in the water, experimenting, being in the labs, anything. The second part of the program 
works to enhance opportunities for freshmen and sophomore students at the University of the Virgin Islands to engage in marine science through new curriculum and through new internships with our partners at the Department of Planning and Natural Resources and the Nature Conservancy. NSF's INCLUDES program consists in providing students with the opportunity to spend time with the conservation practitioners, learning about conservation. The third part creates new opportunities for UVI master's students by partnering with Penn State University through the Bridge to the PhD program, an eight-week summer experience at Penn State. I'm so excited about this program because it gives me the opportunity to try out doing a PhD. Growing up here, I didn't have the like idea of you can actually do this, but I've always wanted to do it. So the PhD Bridge program gives me the opportunity to actually go and feel like I can do this. Seize Your Tomorrow fosters curiosity, instills stewardship, and forges and strengthens educational pathways for Virgin Island youth to explore and secure careers in marine science. Broadening participation in the marine sciences is really important in the U.S. Virgin Islands because conservation of our marine environments are critically important to the economic and ecological vitality of these systems. I think it really says to them, you can do science, you can do it well, and you can do it here. Seize Your Tomorrow is supported by the National Science Foundation through its INCLUDES program, which is a national effort to broaden participation of underrepresented and underserved groups in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Just last week, Acacia shared with us that she's, she will be applying to the PhD program in marine biology at Penn State because of the Summer Bridge experience. If you're interested in learning more about this program, please visit our website, www.seizuretomorrow.org. Jen is one of our undergraduate interns this summer. Jen grew up on St. Thomas, went to Charlotte Amalia High School, and spent two summers as a youth ocean explorer. This summer, she's interning with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration on the National Coral Reef Monitoring Program and with researchers at the University of the Virgin Islands and the University of Texas on a coral disease project. These early research experiences are critical for keeping students interested in STEM. Nationally, fewer than 40% 40 40 of students who enter college thinking they'll major in STEM actually end up earning a STEM degree. Why do they switch majors? For many reasons, but a lot of it has to do with boring classes and lack of authentic research experiences in the first two years. Caesar Tomorrow fills an important gap by providing early research experiences for, for freshmen and sophomore students at the University of the Virgin Islands. One of the innovative aspects of Caesar Tomorrow that the video didn't talk about was the family programming component. In this component, we invite families at the start of the program to tell them what the experience will be like for their students, and then invite them back to have students share with them what those experiences were like and what they learned. Studies show that students who have family support are much more likely to persist in STEM and to earn a STEM degree. And some studies suggest that this may be particularly true for underrepresented groups. Recently, we had our first family programming event for our undergraduate students, and Jen came with her Auntie Rhonda. After watching the video, Rhonda, who she herself had been a biology major at UVI in the late 1990s, turned to Jen and told her how proud she was that she was participating in a program like this. She then turned to me and said, thank you for providing this opportunity. Goosebumps raised on my arms, and I wanted to tell her, no, 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 thank you, thank you for supporting Jen's dream to become a marine scientist. I wish that all of my students had an auntie like you. Instead, 
what I said in my most professional voice was, of course, you're welcome. <laughs> We're so excited to be working with Jen this summer. But maybe I should have told her what was really running through my head. So for those of you in the audience tonight who have sons and daughters, encourage their interests in STEM. They can be the next engineers, the next rocket scientists, and the next ocean explorers. Encourage and support their participation in programs like Caesar Tomorrow that are available right here in the US Virgin Islands. And for those of you in the audience tonight who don't have children, become someone's Auntie Rhonda for a child that you do know. Now, I want you to close your eyes and imagine you're going on a trip anywhere in the world. Now there's a catch. This is a trip to the future, to visit a scientist in the place where she works. In your mind, imagine her busy doing the work that a scientist does. Now, what do you see? Thank you.